I will jump to Camisia, 26th of April, 1981. It was actually near the confluence of Rio Camisia and Rio Urubamba, where the, the two rivers were fairly close together, less than a mile apart in the steep slope, a steep hill in between. Geographically, the only location that I knew where I could move a ship over this uh, hill. There was another before that uh, on further north in the country um, near Vavain, Rio uh, Senepa and Rio Maranion. But um, I ran into a border war there. <clears throat> it's very close to the Cordillera del Condor, the border between Ecuador and, uh, and Peru. And there was a build-up of military that nobody could really explain. And then all of a sudden, an 11 days uh, border war broke out in my camp, which I had built for 1,100 people, mostly extras, of course, uh, was attacked and burnt down. So I had to move to Rio Camisea. <clears throat> Walter, who was a line producer, a Swiss, very tough man. Walter arrived yesterday bringing word that the Uayaga, Uayaga is one of the ships. Uh, um, actually, I had two identical ships, the Narinho and the Uayaga. One was being moved over the mountain, the other one was doing traveling and crashed through the Pongo, the, the rapids. The Uayaga was the one that had crashed through the rapids and almost sunk. Walter arrived yesterday bringing word that the Uayaga was stuck even worse than before. Starting Monday, he could fly in about another hundred compass from a mission station. And he also brought mail that had reached Atalaya by way of Iquitos, as well as magazines and groceries. The plane was loaded almost to capacity with two hawks, which I assume were brought alive, but I did not ask for details because I did not want to have my mental image taken away of the little Cessna with two massive hawks bucket into the passenger <laughs> seats. The freight included three large turkeys, one of which keeps spreading its tail to intimidate me, gobbling <laughs> and putting on a great show of agitation. This turkey, this bird of ill omen, is a pure albin albino, so it is quite a sight when it fans its great white wheel spreads its wings, whose tips trail on the ground and puffs up its feathers. Snorting in bursts, it launched several feigned attacks on me and gazed at me with such intense stupidity emanating from its <laughs> ugly face, which took on a bluish purple coloration and had tumor-like wattles that without more ado, I pulled a feather out of its spreading rear, now, rear end. Now the turkey is sulking. <laughs> I, I had actually an ongoing battle with a turkey. If you like it, I'll read you more about it. <laughs> oh, there's a good one. <laughs> Spirit of ill omen, yeah. Camisia, 2nd of June, 1981. Our kitchen crew slaughtered our last four ducks. While they were still alive, Julian plucked their neck feathers before chopping off their heads on the execution block. The albi now, now comes the real thing. <laughs> the albino turkey, that vain creature, the survivor of so many roast chickens and ducks transformed into soup, came over to inspect, gobbling and displaying used his ugly feet to push one of the beheaded ducks as it lay there on the ground bleeding and flapping its wings into what he thought was a proper position in making, making gurgling sounds while his bluish red wattles swelled. He mounted the dying duck and copulated with it. <laughs> I swear to God, I've seen it. Can you see a fourth of it? I if you laugh so much, I can't breathe anymore. <laughs> Let's try it. Can you see a fourth of June 1981? The camp is silent with resignation, 
Only the, um, it continues with the turkey. Only the turkey is making a racket. It attacked me, overestimating its own strength, and I quickly grabbed its neck, which squirmed and tried to swallow, slapped him left, right, with the casual elegance of, an arrog of the arrogant cavaliers I had seen in French musketeer films, who dutifully do fancy sword play and, and then let the vain albino go. His feelings hurt, it trotted away, wriggling his rump, but with his wings still spread in conceited display. On a sand bank by the Pongo, Pongo is this um, uh, very, very intense rapids. On a sand bank by the Pongo that the river had uncovered, a petrified turtle was found, but it must be so immensely large and heavy that it was impossible to transport. Segundo gave me a big insect, quite unusual. I heard it had been caught in Shivankurini and nailed to a board. It has a bulge on its head, like that of a crocodile, and allegedly its bite is lethal, as Segundo reveals in a whisper. <laughs> During the rubber era, there were many more of them, and the only way to prevent certain death was allegedly to make love to a woman right away. But a hundred years ago, when there were so many woodsmen but hardly any women, a silent understanding developed that in such a situation a woman would be lent out by her husband and thus quite a few men who were bitten managed to survive. 